explained to her that in Bible, it mm -hmm. uh, explains that you should cover your head too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She ha she never heard about it. Okay, no problem. Here's the verse. Let me explain the issue of covering uh, at least the head in the Bible first. Or did you want to? Uh huh. Is that when Jesus came, mm -hmm. right, for Christians, he took the whole holy scriptures okay. and condensed it down into two laws. What are the two laws? Well, what those two laws were were to have love for okay. your neighbor. Gotcha. Your neighbor. So okay. That means wherever you're from or wherever you are, mm -hmm. you're supposed to love your neighbor. Okay. So if you love your neighbor, you're not going to kill your neighbor. You're not going to. I hope steal, not. You're not going to steal your neighbor's wife. Okay. You're not going to take your neighbor's children. Like these are all the things that you're not going to do out of love for neighbor. Right. Then he said mm -hmm. that you should love your God with everything, your whole heart, mind, and soul. That is this in the Bible? Yeah. What verse are we talking about? Well, right now it does not come okay. to mind. Okay. So I was reading the Bible. And I mean, I can show you the verses. Uh, no, actually, I'm not. I mean, I do know some verses about loving thy neighbor, but I, I don't know of a verse that says that Jesus took all of the law and condensed it into two principles. Okay. But, but in it, he said that I came and I, I condensed the law of the past. Because from what I read from the Bible, Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law, but to rectify it. Is that correct? That's correct. So that means... That, but but that, that's not... I haven't read... Can you show me where in the Bible he says I, I brought the law down to two... But I'll tell you what. Okay. Please. Excellent. Please, I would. Excellent. But what, what I'm... I, I will be every Sunday. This is a King James version. The Gideon's Bible. This is a King James. And which version of the same thing. Same thing. What version do you read from? Do you, do you like believe in the Holy King James. Scriptures? What, what do you mean by believe in them? I mean, well, I mean, like, do you. Do I believe there was a man named Jesus? Yes. Do I believe he got a scripture revealed to him? Yes. Do I believe that scripture's been corrupted? Yes. Uh, but I believe that. Yes. So I, I believe the so I believe the Quran, the Bible, the Old Testament, and the Psalms of David were all from the same God. Okay, I believe that those earlier three have all been corrupted today. Only the Quran is preserved. So, so here's what I believe. Mm -hmm. I believe a lot of people have the Bible, mm -hmm. and a lot of people refer it to as the Bible. Okay. But in the Bible, that talks about it as being holy scriptures, okay. sacred scriptures. Okay. So if they're sacred texts, that certain people should be allowed to handle them, and certain people should not be necessarily um, touching those things because they're hmm, sacred. That's interesting. Because, yeah, it is. Right. But well, why, why would a sacred text not be available to everybody? Well, it is available to everybody. Okay. But there's so. some people who should not be taking it in terms of using it as to weaponize it. No. Uh, not, not to weaponize it, but to read it, to understand it, to use it for guidance, to see if it's really still preserved or not. Like, let me give you an example, right? To inspire with it. Sure. But not necessarily to challenge or to break down faith. But to understand whether it's authentic or not, right? to actually say that there's a corruption in it. Why not, if there is? If you say that it's corrupted, yes. then the people who have, like, you have Jesus on here, Yes. So you're connecting Jesus. No. I'm, I'm just following my thought. Okay. You're connecting, you're connecting Jesus mm -hmm. to being a Muslim. Yes. Okay. So if you say Jesus, mm -hmm. then quoted from the Holy Scriptures. Okay. And you say that those words are good. Okay. But then you say the Holy Scriptures are corrupted. Later on. Then you corrupt both Jesus and No, no, no. So, so, so let me, let me, let me explain this to you. Okay. Please just stay with me, okay? Let's say this brother of mine says at a dinner gathering that this person is a really good person. Okay? You with me? Are you? Okay. So he's a good person. What he said is good. Let's say somebody heard him and somebody else heard him who twisted his words. They came and told me that he said that person's a bad person. Can, yeah, that happens all the time. Excellent. Now, if I say that those words that have reached me have been corrupted, the person in the middle changed them, I'm not disrespecting him or the word he said. I respect him and I respect the original word he said. 
What I'm saying is somebody later on, no fault of his, corrupted those words and what got to me in the end was not what he said. Sure, that makes sense. That Excellent. All the time. Excellent. That's that why I'm stopping by to ask questions. Excellent. I, I appreciate I, it. So what I have noticed, mm -hmm. I have had friends in the past. Mm -hmm. well, I shouldn't say friends, but I have had acquaintances. Yeah. That's probably better. Um, who in the past have told me things based mm -hmm. on what they understood. Like Got it. The person told me about the hair and how they needed to cover Got it. it up because we're the hair is like supposedly sexual or something like that. So it has sure. To be covered, but now you're saying that's not so, so, so let me give you a criterion to understand right from wrong. The other thing that I wanted to ask, because I have like several questions. Mm -hmm. In Christianity, or when Jesus came, he made certain that the women were taught right along with the men. Um, okay. The person that I met, she said that that doesn't happen. She said that mm -hmm. the women are separated mm -hmm. and the men are the ones who are instructed or taught or whatever, which doesn't fit with what Jesus said or what I agree said. with. So let me so explain. Does that still sure, that doesn't happen, first off. We have a mosque here in San Diego. We have lessons. There are women there just as there are men there. They learn just as men do. But the do prophet's wife. Yes, they pray together, but in separate areas. As, as the original law of Christianity was, as the Jewish tradition was, that women prayed separate. Even if you go today, can I finish? Please be patient. I listen to you. Okay. Even today, if you go to if you go to Israel and you go to the Wailing Wall, where the original Jews have been worshiping for thousands of years, men and women are separate. It's not because one is inferior or one is kept away from it, but rather what it is is that a time of prayer is a time of focus on your Creator. You don't want to be distracted by trying to have a natural urge, which everybody has naturally, to impress the opposite gender. Women could be superior to men. Sure. In, in knowledge, no doubt, there is, let me, let me explain this. The wife, of the, the wife of the Prophet, let me just one last thing. What's your name? My name is Uthman. Uthman? Yes. Uthman? So the wife of the Prophet, she was one of the greatest scholars of Islamic history. Greater than any scholar alive today and she was a woman. Her name is Aisha. She could read, she could write, she narrated. One of the top five narrators of Hadith is Aisha. So just to let you know that what your friend told me is incorrect and here's evidence for it.